with every passing year, our dependence on digital technology increases tenfold. We book transport via our mobiles and shop clothes on our laptops. Among all these nitty-gritty day-to-day activities, information such as payment authentication, personal data, and private credentials are transported over the internet with various website partners. With this reliance on the internet as gradual, its impact has been every bit as definite. This statistic represents the daily time spent online by internet users worldwide starting from 2011 all the way up to 2021 sorted by device. According to Zenith Optimedia, in 2018, the average daily minutes of desktop internet consumption per capita amounted to 39 minutes and it is slowly projected to decline until 2020. However, the daily mobile internet consumption is set to increase to 155 minutes in 2021. If our current lifestyle is any indication of the future, these statistics are just a window into what is going to be a future full of artificial intelligence and its derivatives. As observed by researchers around the world, this level of dependability has made us vulnerable to the worst of the internet. According to the Forbes magazine in 2019, the cumulative damage and costs of cyber effect are far more significant than those inflicted by natural disasters in a year. Every 11 seconds, a business falls victim to a ransomware attack. The average cost of a data breach in 2020 is $3.86 million. The huge increase in cyber crimes is a major contributor to the 12% annual growth rate of cybersecurity spending. The United States has the world's highest average data breach crossed at $6.84 million as per 2020 records. Opportunities breed innovation. And this has been observed in the cybersecurity domain as well. To safeguard against such threats, the SSL protocol was developed. Hey everyone, this is Bhaiabhav from Simply Learn, and welcome to this video on the SSL handshake. Let's look at the topics we have to cover today. We first take a look at the origin and the basics of the SSL protocol in the networking segment. We understand the core values of the secure SSL layer and the protection it provides against various malicious attacks and domains. Next, we learn about the four distinct sub-protocols to be found under the SSL flag, all the way up to a step-by-step -step explanation on how the SSL handshake is initiated until its completion. Finally, we learn about the future of SSL and the implications it may have on the immediate generation of internet security. We also have a quiz in between the topics. So stay focused and let's see if you can answer the question. Let us learn about the SSL protocol first. SSL or Secure Sockets layer is an encryption-based internet security protocol. It was first developed by Netscape in 1995 for the purpose of ensuring privacy, authentication and data integrity in internet communication. SSL is the predecessor to the modern TLS encryption used today. It acts as a cryptographic layer protocol that provides privacy and security to communication between a client and a web server. A website that implements SSL authentication has HTTPS in its URL instead of HTTP. In order to provide a high degree of privacy, SSL encrypts data that is transmitted across the web. This means that anyone who tries to intercept this data will only see a garbled mix of characters that is nearly impossible to decrypt. SSL initiates an authentication process called a handshake between two communicating devices to ensure that both of them are really who they claim to be. SSL also digitally signs data in order to provide data integrity. The internet we use today follows an OSI model or even systems interconnections model. It is a priority system that characterizes and standardizes the communication on the internet. Among its multiple layers, the SSL layer functions between the application layer and the transport layer. The application layer provides services for an application to ensure that effective communication with another applic program is possible. The transport layer is responsible for error-free end-to-end delivery of data from the source host to the destination host. Since the SSL protocol functions in between these two layers, the data is encrypted and is authenticated after being passed through the application and before it is transmitted over the network. To further understand this priority table, let us look at the table of how it works. 
Hypertext Transfer Protocol HTTP is an application layer protocol that is used for transmitting information between computers on the World Wide Web. HTTP is based on a request response standard between a client and server. Once the data is ready to be shared, we can pass it on to the SSL layers. As you can notice, the protocol being used right now is HTTP, which signifies that the data is unencrypted and hence vulnerable to malicious attacks. The data is then passed on to the SSL where we have the record protocol for the confidentiality protection and the handshake protocol for the authentication of client and server. The sub-protocols of the SSL will be later discussed in detail. After the data is encrypted and ready to be transmitted, it is moved on to the transport layer where we use the TCP packets to send the data along to the internet layer and from that point forward, the data can move to its destination using the internet protocol or IP addressing tables. With so many sub-protocols and sub-variants of the SSL protocol, the work is divided into multiple layers and aspects. Let's have a look at some of the ways the SSL layer make the internet safe and secure. For server authentication, the client uses the server's public key to encrypt the data which is used to complete the secret key. The server can generate the secret key only if it can decrypt the information with the correct private key. For client authentication, the server uses the public key in the client certificate. If any of the authentication steps fail, the handshake fails and the session terminate. This exchange of digital certificates during the SSL handshake is a part of the authentication process. SSL provides data integrity by calculating a message digest or a hash. Use of SSL does ensure integrity provided that the cipher spec in your channel definition uses a hash algorithm. In the SSL record protocol, the hash value is generated for the data to be transmitted, hence providing a necessary way to verify data corruption. SSL uses a combination of symmetric and asymmetric encryption to ensure message privacy. During the SSL handshake, the SSL client and server agree to an encryption algorithm and a shared secret key is used for that particular session. All the messages transmitted between the client and server are then encrypted using the same algorithm and key that ensure that the message will remain private even if it is intercepted. Regarding the multiple layers in the SSL protocol, we have many sub-protocols that ensure the three protection aspects of security. Let us learn more about these. The SSL record protocol provides two services to the SSL connection, confidentiality and message integrity. In SSL record protocol, the data is divided into fragments. The fragment comprises of the encrypted SHA code and the MD5 code. After the encryption of the data is done, the last SSL header is also appended to the data. The handshake protocol is used to establish sessions. This protocol allows the client and server to authenticate each other by sending a series of messages. Handshake protocol uses four-phase system to complete its cycle. In phase one, both the client and server send hello packets to each other. In phase two, they exchange the certificates with the correct private and public keys. In phase three, they reply to each other with the encryption algorithms and the secret keys while in phase 4, the handshake is completed. For the change cipher spec protocol, we use a part of the SSL record protocol. Unless handshake is completed, the SSL record output will be in a pending state. After handshake, the pending state is converted into a current state. The change cipher protocol consists of a single message which is of one byte in length and can hold only one value. The SSL alert protocol is used to convey SSL related alerts to the peer entity. Each message in this protocol contains only two bytes. Let's take a small quiz to check if the older topics are clearly understood. Once the data is encrypted in the SSL layer, where is the data being passed on to? Is it A, the application layer, B, the transport layer, C, the internet layer, or D, presentation layer? Take a few seconds to recall our last topic and be sure to leave your answer in the comment section of this video. Let's move on with our topic. Now that we understand the entire protocol and its working, 
Let's see how the SSL handshake works in a step-by-step -step format. We have divided the handshake into four distinct phases. In phase one, the client and server get acquainted with the hello signal message from each side. The client sends the SSL version, cipher suit and the session ID. The server returns an encryption algorithm which is chosen from the cipher suit and a compression algorithm which is sent from the client hello signal each. This helps in setting up a common encryption algorithm and a common hash value to be used throughout the handshake process. In phase two, the server sends its authentication certificate and requests for client authentication. The server also sends its public encryption key and the phase with the server hello done message. Once the server sends its public key, the client can use it to encrypt its own private key, which will be later used to encrypt the data being exchanged between the client and a server. In phase three, the client sends its authentication certificate after verifying the server with the respective certificate authorities. The client now send a private key, which is encrypted using the server's previously sent public key. In phase four, the client sends the status of the cipher functions along with a finished message to end the handshake from its side. The server also sends the status of the cipher algorithm and ends with a finished signal. The data is now encrypted with a symmetric key client sent in phase three. With the end of phase four, authentication is complete and the SSL handshake has maintained the authenticity of the entire session between the client and server. To reiterate the entire process, let's go through each step one more time. The client sends a hello request to the server. The server responds with its own hello message and sends the server authentication certificate for verification. At this point, the server's hello signal is complete. The client exchanges a secret key with the server to encrypt the data and the cipher spec parameters are changed accordingly. The client has now finished its own handshake activities. The server uses the secret key provided by the client to encrypt the data and alters its own cipher spec parameters as a final step before it sends a finished signal. At this point, the SSL handshake is complete with an encryption algorithm and a secure data channel to transmit information. With the SSL protocol being developed in the early 90s, it was bound to be a little underpowered when pitted against the current day computers and hackers. Let's see its future implications and replacements. SSL encryption has been depreciated now with its version two and version three being dropped by the Internet Engineering Task Force in 2011 and 2015 respectively. There had been far too many security vulnerabilities to carry on official activities during the SSL prayer. To further enhance the security, the Transport Layer Security or TLS has been developed as a successor to the SSL protocol. TLS is a proposed IETF standard first developed in 1999 and the current version is TLS 1.3 which was defined in August 2018. Even though a major part of the internet is still using TLS 1.2 as a safety net, the transition to the latest version should be completed before any security deficiencies are exploited. Hope you learned something interesting today. If you have any questions regarding the topic we learned today, feel free to leave your comments and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.